everyone, this is Misty at Nerd News Social, and we are back at WonderCon with the producer and voice actor for Housebroken. Uh, they are opening up the next season. You're going to be able to watch it pretty soon on TV, and we are looking forward to seeing what they bring to the table this time. Tell me a little bit about putting together a show about our pets, our pets ourselves. <laughs> it is our pets ourselves. Um, well, it's it's a really fun show to work on because uh, we get to watch animal videos on YouTube and talk about times we've gone to therapy and mix it all together. So yeah, it's it's a it's a really fun show and. The fact that we got this cast is incredible, and that just kind of makes it uh, a dream to work on. We, I mean, it is an incredible cast. Yeah. The, the, I mean, everybody who works on the show is just very, very talented and very nice. It's a, a group of people you just love spending time with. So, so. Uh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, I, I concur with her. It's just a <laughs> fantastic group. Yeah. So what was the genesis for you of uh, putting together a show about our pets and its representations of us in the world? Well, it's, I love that you put it that way. That's that's what we were going for. Um, really looking at humans through the lens of animals because it, it's, it's easier to talk about things that way sometimes. So. Um, we actually, it was when my writing partner Gabby and I were on Veep and we knew we really loved Clea Duvall and we wanted to work with her on something and we couldn't figure out what and Clea told us uh, one day after a table read we were just chatting and she was talking about her cat Twig who uh, really is kind of aloof and judgmental and she really wanted to go to therapy with with Twig and kind of get to the crux of what the issue was and try to work things out and we thought that was a really funny idea for a show and so the three of us kept talking about it and it kind of evolved into a group of animals and um, and and that was that was the genesis. I really liked uh, like the opening uh, episode where they have like the the group therapy session and they're all hanging out and you just sort of get an idea of what the issue is for each individual animal and then they bring um, the, the the Saint Bernard. He's like mm -hmm. kind of like you can't be in our group. Right, right, right. He has no. Uh, Chief, the St. Bernard, played by Nat Fax, and he has no um, interest or ability for introspection. So he's just sort of happy with life as is and does not feel like he needs therapy and would only be bored by it. It's so. best for everybody that he's not in the group. Yes, <laughs> it is, absolutely, yes. Shell's probably in the same, like, Shell should, Shell probably should be excluded from the group. But but, but he has such a strong drive to talk about himself that That's he's not going to be, true. he plays by the rules right. just enough, yes. I think, to stay in the group so he can keep dominating the discussion. And I, I like how, as uh, animals, you can kind of broach topics in a way that you really couldn't quite do with people. You know, they have like quirks and stuff where if it was a people cast, they, you know, your audience might be like, oh, I don't know about that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I really enjoyed that from uh, this show. Um, what could you tell us about what we can expect from season two? Uh, well, season two is, we, we after season one, we decided like, we could go a little bigger with everything. So we sort of, we decided to dig a little deeper into the neuroses of the pets. We decided to have, have it be a little more action filled. Um, we uh, really like leaned on the animators to help us up the visuals. And so I think it's kind of like a, um, I mean, we're really happy with it. And, and, and we also got really comfortable with this amazing cast, which I think the first season we probably just spent like wondering like, how do we, these actors are, are so talented and intimidating, what do we do? And so see, the second season we just started like, just really um, just leaning on them too and, and using their gifts. And so it's, um, I don't know, it's just been, it, they, they smooshed together season two and three, so it's a lot of episodes, and I'm just so excited for them to get out in the world. And as a writer and director, how much of like your home pets come into the show kind of reflected in either main characters or side? We definitely all, everyone in the writer's room talks about their pets a lot, so we take little bits of all different pet stories and put them together. 
Uh, so they're definitely very present. Uh, yeah. Um, is there like a favorite? Is there the one that everyone talks about that isn't in the show maybe? But. Um, no, I mean, I like to think that my dogs are probably everybody's favorite, but I don't, I don't know if that's true. There, there is Who are like, your dogs? Who are you? uh, well, I guess one of my dogs kind of looks like Diablo, but she has a different personality. And then my other dogs don't really... My dogs aren't really as funny as our characters, but I will say I have a least favorite pet slash character, which is Gabby, my writing partner's former dog, Carter, who is just a monster, and he will bite everyone when you're not looking he'll just attack your ankles and he is the the meanest craziest with no redeeming qualities whatsoever the worst animal who's ever walked oh, no. the earth <laughs> so well <laughs> at least somebody loves him someone's gonna love him right i'm i mean maybe i don't know no i know you want a happy ending yeah somebody loves him okay good good <laughs> <laughs> and how about for you uh, where do you draw from to voice act a aged, <laughs> libido-driven tortoise? I mean, they're old, pervy turtles in, inside all of us. <laughs> so it's just a matter of, like, bringing it out. I, you know, I've, I, we've talked about this before. Um, when I got the honor of being in Saturday Night Live uh, for for eight years, you're just constantly getting different, a bunch of different roles and you, you know, you don't want to do the same voice for everything. So you're constantly trying to come up with new characters and experimenting and, and in the stuff that you write. So it's, you know, it was a really, you kind of build up this, this big army of voices that are, you know, that you can you know, some some you kind of forget about them, but but this this was one that I I forget what character I had done, but I had found this voice for some sketch that probably didn't make it on on <laughs> air. But then when when I read this, it just I, it kind of came back to me, and I thought, oh, I'm gonna pitch this voice to them for this because it seemed like the, the appropriate uh, creepy. Um, <laughs> voice, so I so and they they like that one, so it was a very easy process, and it's not not always that way. Sometimes you got to workshop it a little bit. So I was it was just very thrilling that, but it also was a huge testament to how well this character was written. They you know it was, it was, it was very clear to me what they were kind of going for, and, and uh, uh, yeah, so it just worked out worked out very nicely. Excellent. Yeah. Well. Thank you so much for uh, spending some time with us. Thank you. Talking to our audience. And I really am looking forward to what comes out of season two. I hope there's a season three. Yeah, I hope so too. Thank you. Thank you Fingers very much. Crossed. <laughs> Thank you again, guys. This is Misty and Nerd News Social, and we'll see you in the next video.